Hey guys and welcome! In today's video I'm gonna show you 5 underrated gadgets of Battlefield 2042, how they work and why you should give them a try. I guess you all know how good the recall this M5 is, the ammo and med crates or the proximity sensors. But this video will be about the underdogs, the gadgets that are ignored by a lot of players but are actually pretty good and helpful. And the first one of those is the insertion beacon. The insertion beacon is a little gadget that can be placed everywhere on the map and provides an additional spawn point for your squad. In the spawn menu it appears as a small green square with an arrow. Insertion beacons of other teammates appear in blue but you cannot spawn at them. Also no one outside of your squad can spawn at your beacon. For every time one or more of your squad mates spawn at your beacon you receive a small amount of XP. The beacon stays on the map as long as it's not destroyed or you place a new one at another location. It can be used infinitely by your squad mates but once you spawn on it it will disappear and you will have to place a new one. So be sure to think about that when using it. Also the beacon doesn't have a cooldown or can be resupplied. Once you placed one you will only have access to a new one when you respawn or when you picked up the old one. Even if it is destroyed by an enemy you won't get a new one. But when you respawn on a teammate or on an objective and place a new beacon, the old one will disappear, so you can only have one beacon at a time on the map. Place it in strategic spots like close to an objective, but still hidden in a corner or behind cover where your squad mates won't spawn directly into death. Cause the beacon doesn't prevent you from spawning in the middle of a gunfight or when there are enemies around. And except for the red dots on the map, you won't have any chance to see what's going on around it. Unless the spawn beacons in former Battlefield titles that made a relatively loud noise that you could clearly hear when standing nearby, the insertion beacon of 2042 only makes a slight radio sound, so during battle it's almost impossible to hear them. But if you should stumble upon an enemy beacon by accident, be sure to destroy it. Next up is the repair tool, of which I thought it would be completely useless in Battlefield 2042 since vehicles have auto repair and can also add a self repair ability in the upgrades. But I was wrong. Playing the repair tool only for a few matches made me realize already how important it still is and how underrated. It basically works the same way it did in former Battlefield titles. When a vehicle is damaged, just walk over to it and press the trigger button while you hold the repair tool to start repairing. The status of the tool and of the vehicle is always visible in the middle of your screen. The bar below the crosshair shows the health of the vehicle. While repairing it will fill up again, but when the vehicle is taking damage it empties. After a while the repair tool overheats and will then have a short cooldown before you can use it again. The small semicircle within your crosshair indicates this overheating and cooling down. But it's also shown with a small circle in the bottom right corner of the screen or directly at the repair tool in its display. The cooldown is always around 3 seconds no matter how long you use the tool and if it is completely overheated or not. So just keep repairing as long as you can. This can really help to keep your team's vehicles alive much longer and also grants you XP every few seconds. In addition you can take some smoke grenades with you or equip the smoke grenade launcher for your weapon to cover your repair. As a driver on the other hand you will get a message on the left side of the screen that the vehicle is repaired. So be sure to help your teammates as much as they help you and cover them with smoke or wait for the repair to end, if you can. But the repair tool can not only repair light vehicles and tanks, it can do even more. When you are in one of the passenger seats of a helicopter or condor, you can repair the aircraft from within. Just do the same as for the tank. Point your crosshair at the surface of the vehicle and start repairing as long as you can. This is pretty cool and will definitely surprise a few of your pilots. In addition you can also repair the robot dog ranger and Boris sentry gun. So when you play Boris and equip the repair tool you can keep your turret alive even longer. And you can not only repair but also deal damage with the tool. No matter if it is an infantry soldier or an enemy vehicle. For the vehicles the tool doesn't deal that much damage but it's still perfect if the vehicle is on low health already. And if you're looking for another way to communicate with your teammates you can also draw with the tool. Another very underrated gadget are the EMP grenades. When thrown at an enemy or at a vehicle they disrupt the target's HUD and blur their vision. Also the sound is completely gone for a few seconds and makes it impossible to hear footsteps, gunfire or vehicles. In addition it deals slight damage to enemies in the center of the explosion. Infantry soldiers are still able to shoot their weapons and deal normal damage but it's definitely harder for them to react. Vehicles that have been hit by an EMP grenade can't even shoot anymore and all of their spotting and targeting systems are disabled as well. But they can still move as usual. The effect lasts for about 8 seconds. While disrupted the bottom of your screen turns red. When it turns blue again the effect of the grenade ends. 
When you are the one throwing the grenade, you get a small hit marker and a message below your crosshair when enemies were disrupted. In addition, the disrupted targets have a red flash above their heads. But the EMP grenade does not only affect infantry and vehicles, but also the abilities of some of the specialists and their gadgets. If Rao gets hit by the EMP blast, he can't hack for a few seconds, so he can't disable vehicles or spot targets. Same for Pike. She's also not able to use her scanning ability as long as the effect of the grenade lasts. Casper's recon drone will be disabled as well, and also the proximity sensor built into his suit. The same for Boris and his sentry gun. When hit by one of the grenades, it will completely stop working for a few seconds, so it won't spot or shoot at anyone. In addition, the EMP grenades even deal slight damage to the turret. The same for basically all other gadgets that spot targets or work with electronics. The insertion beacon won't be available as long as it is disrupted, the proximity sensors won't spot and the Soflam won't do anything at all. When thrown at anti-tank mines, the EMP grenades even destroy them instead of just disabling them for a while. And they also disrupt Ranger's targeting systems, so he will still walk around but won't shoot you anymore. If you use them right, the EMP grenades are much more powerful than any other grenade available in Battlefield 2042. And if you equip them alongside an ammo crate, you can basically keep all enemy gadgets and vehicles disabled during a match. The next underrated gadget is the Mad Pen. It's not a team play gadget like the others and only helpful for yourself, but no less important. The Mad Pen works like the most self-healing gadgets you know from other shooter games and completely regenerates your health within a few seconds. It's even faster than Falk's syringe or the medic crate. By default, you have three of them in your loadout that can be resupplied at any time at a medic crate or at Angel's loadout drop. At the medic crate, you will receive one pen with each cycle of the crate. Ammo crates won't resupply the pen. Its function is pretty simple. Once you took damage, a self-heal message will show up on screen and you can press 4 on keyboard or D-pad right on controller to instantly heal yourself. This can save your life quite a few times during a match if there is no one around to heal you or if you are not playing one of the support specialists or have a medic crate equipped. The only thing that is a bit annoying is that the self-healing message already pops up when you drop below 90% health and won't disappear before you are above 90 HP again. But I hope this will get improved with one of the next updates. And last but not least, there is the Soflam. It's probably the most powerful gadget available as you can not only designate vehicles and aircrafts with it, but also spot huge groups of enemies with one look. I already made a full video about it where I explain more detailed how it really works and what you can do with it, so I only give you a short overview here. If you want to learn more about it, be sure to click the link in the info box. The Soflam is basically a sniper scope that allows you to mark enemy vehicles and aircrafts with a red rectangle. This allows your teammates, on the other hand, to lock onto these targets with their recallless M5 that usually wouldn't lock on and turn their rockets into self-targeting missiles. That's really helpful to control the airspace and the area of an objective and avoids that your team is getting completely destroyed by vehicles. In addition, you can use the Soflam to spot enemies on a distance of about 500 meters, which is half of the size of Kaleidoscope. They will then appear as red dots on your teammates' minimaps and will also have a red dot above their heads. You, as the spotter, receive XP for spotting and assists when one of your teammates kills an enemy you marked. And that's it for today. I hope this video helps you to better understand the gadgets of Battlefield 2042 and how they work. And if it does, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm the Catwoman, and you are awesome.